Hello, in this video I will talk about collections in Python and uh, I'll get into lists, tuples, dictionaries and sets in Python. Now starting with lists, this is probably uh, the most important and most versatile uh, type of container there is in Python and um, you can declare lists using the square brackets. So here we define a list called A and it contains three strings and um, the strings are blueberry, strawberry and pineapple and we can see the square brackets around them tell Python that this will be a list. And uh, we can check the type and indeed Python tells us this is a list and it also prints out um, the elements of this list. Now it doesn't really matter what we put in these lists um, compared to other languages which have very um, static types and want to have pre-declared um, data type for um, data structures. Python does not care about this and you can mix different data types in a single list and um, everything will just work fine. Um, just as an example here, we create the list B and add a string, an integer, a float, a boolean, another string, another list and uh, this temp object which is just an object. So it's an empty object which doesn't do anything um, and this just works and uh, Python allows this. We can access single um, elements from the list by using the square brackets behind the variable and then uh, adding the index to the in, inside the square brackets. And be careful that um, Python starts counting at zero. So the first element in the list has the index zero. Um, so yeah, to access the first element here of A, we write A and then in square brackets zero, which returns a strawberry and then the second element with index 1 is strawberry. What is very powerful in Python is that you can also index the list from the back um, by using negative numbers in the square brackets. You can access the last element of a list with minus 1 and then the second to last um, element with minus 2 and the rest of the list um, analogously. And this will um, yeah, return pineapple as the last one and we've declared that up here the last element is indeed pineapple. Something else that is very powerful regarding lists in Python is slicing. And slicing is a, a mean of indexing specific parts of a list. And um, I'll show you a couple of examples. Um, first we will define a list with just uh, integers from 0 to 9. And we call it b. And here we start with the first example of slicing. And um, the syntax for slicing is also kept inside square brackets. And here we tell Python that it should start at the first element, so at index 0. And then we have a colon and a 2. And this tells it go until. So the colon means um, go until. And um, the 2 tells Python that 2 should be um, the last one. And actually the 2 is exclusive, so it will not include the 2. I will go um, to this stop, so the number behind the colon minus 1. And here if we execute this we get 0 and 1, um, which is right because uh, we index from 0, and we take the 0th element, which is 0, the first one, which is 1, and then it stops because we don't include the, um, the last index, the stop index. We can also leave out parts of this slicing. Um, here we start from 2, and then say go until and leave out the stop and this tells Python to just continue until the end um, but we start from the second element so it uh, outputs 2 to 9 um, yeah now if we leave out both um, it will just show us the whole list um, and actually it will copy the list um, but this is just a soft copy or a shallow copy being that the elements inside the list are not actually copied, but just the list itself. But this is an easy way to copy lists in Python. Um, yeah, this is uh, just an example to show you that we can also leave out the first um, part of the slicing, where this starts from zero and then goes onto the um, second to last element, because minus one would be the last element, but it's exclusive, so we leave out the last element. So it just goes from zero to eight. Now we can also add a third number to the slicing, um, also separate it with another colon. And um, what this does is it tells Python the step size. 
So here in the example, we started to go up to eight. Um, well, actually up to seven because eight is still exclusive. And um, this two tells Python that it should take steps of two. And this by this we um, just take the even numbers because uh, we started to then go two numbers up to four and then get two up again to six. And then if we would go up to more, we would uh, land at eight, but eight is the exclusive last index. So it will stop at the six. And um, another very powerful thing in Python is um, that you can start, <coughs> you can index, uh, you can slice the list um, using just the last one in the slicing syntax. So using just the step and make that negative. So um, this will reverse the order of the list and Python figures out itself that if the step size is negative, it will probably start at the end of the list and go to the front and not um, yeah, start at the um, front and go to the back. Now we have a small exercise and um, I, would like you, I would like you to um, yeah, write down um, how we could get all the numbers from the list B that are divisible by three. And I guess um, there will be a question popping up now. All right, and I hope you selected the correct answer. This is it. And um, the correct syntax is that we start at three because this will give us um, the fourth element because we start at zero, counting at zero. And then we take steps of three because every third number from three on is divisible by three. All right, um, now we go over to manipulating lists. There are different functions to manipulate lists in Python. First of all, we have append. And what append does is um, it just adds an element to the list. And here we add a banana. And as we can see, it was successfully added to the list. And uh, now we have the natural numbers up to nine and banana. We can also add lists um, to this list. So this will include uh, the list one and two as one element in our list B. And then because Python doesn't care about uh, types and lists, we can also add a function. We add the function len um, and it's just inserted, uh, inserted as another element. Um, it's very simple here. Now the function pop um, removes the last element of the list and returns it. And um, here we save the last element that was removed in the variable popped. And then we output B and popped. So the list and the element that we just removed. And here we can see that uh, this part here is the new list, which just goes up to this last list element. And then this is the function that we removed um, by the b.pop call. Um, yeah, now if we want to um, add elements to our list, but uh, we want to add multiple elements at once, but not as a list inside the list, we can use extend, which just concatenates the two lists um, and adds the single elements inside the extend call as single elements in our list. And here you can see that we successfully added the one and the two as single elements. Okay, um, now we can use the same operators as we used for strings, also for lists, um, namely the multiplication. For example, here we define our list L2, uh, which is just a four inside the list, um, but we take the list times three. And um, then we also have a list L1, which is just one, two, three. And then in the end, we concatenate them together using a plus. Uh, same as with strings, then we can also use the plus to concatenate. And uh, we get one, two, three, and then three times the four. The three fours come from this L2. So uh, what the multiplication does is it just repeats the list which is here um, before the multiplication um, as many times as we specify in the multiplication. We can get the length of a list using the len function. And if we say len b, we can see b has currently the length 14. And um, yeah, by the way, you can also just use the slicing for strings. Um, that's another nice feature. So if we want to slice the string hello world and only get all the characters up to the fifth one, which is also exclusive, 
um, we say a and then use the slicing syntax uh, up to five and we just get the word hello. All right, now um, what is important to note in Python is that lists are mutable, uh, meaning that we can actually change the list object um, and it is still the same object, but the internal data changed. Uh, we already did that by, for example, adding or appending uh, elements to the list or calling the extent or pop function. Um, and this actually changes the list object itself and does not return a new list. Um, for strings, uh, we can't do that. Uh, strings, for example, are immutable. And um, every time we do something with the string, for example, concatenate two strings, it will return a new string object and um, will not change the old ones. Um, and this could uh, lead to some, some bugs because um, now if we create a list and assign this list to another variable, so we have A is this list and now B is the list as well, um, and we just print B and then we modify A and we print B again. Then the difference uh, to before is that now B changed as well. And this happened because um, the list object is mutable and here we changed the first element of um, the list, but both variables A and B are looking or pointing at the same list ob uh, object. So if we change one of them, both variables uh, notice this change. If we don't want this behavior, then um, there is a deep copy function inside um, the copy module. So if we want to use that, we have to say from copy import deep copy. And this tells Python that we want to use this deep copy function, which is lo located in the copy module. And here as an example, we declare the uh, list A, one, two, banana and three. And then we do a deep copy of A and assign the result to B. And the deep copy means that um, we will copy the list and then also copy all the elements in this list recursively so that none of the objects inside the list are the same as before. Um, the alternative, as we've seen before, is a soft or shallow copy um, using just A and then uh, in square brackets just a colon. This will only copy the list but not the elements inside. So if we have a mutable object um, as an element in a list and we do a shallow or soft copy of this list, um, the element is still the same object in both lists. So if we change the mutable element of the one list, it's also changed in the other list. And here in the example, we can now change uh, A, the first element of A, and set it to cheesecake. And if we print B, B is still 1, 2, banana, and 3. So changing the first element of A did not affect the list B. One problem that now arises um, when looking at these objects is that um, if we create, for example, um, a list of empty lists uh, in Python, we could do that by saying we have a list with an empty list inside and that 10 times. Um, this will make a problem that all the um, empty lists all the 10 empty lists inside this big list are the same object. And if we modify one of these objects, we will actually modify all of them because it's the same one. And here um, we first print this list and it shows us a list of 10 empty lists. And then we um, take the L2 at the position zero. So we take the first empty list of L2 and append a one to that. Now we print L2 again and we get a list with lists containing ones. Um, and this shows that um, we have the same list everywhere because we just changed one list here, but all of them got changed. All right. Um, now there's a way in Python to check if an element is contained by a list. And uh, this is very simple. Uh, you can just use the in keyword and you can ask uh, Python banana in A and this uh, will evaluate to true if the string banana is in the list A and will evaluate to false if banana is not in A. But right now banana is in A, so this is true. Um, all right, another exercise for you. We declare a variable um, a string called Fred 
and um, we have a list first names which is empty and then we append the uh, some guy so we append Fred to this list and then we create the list another list of names and say another list of names equals first names and uh, we append George to this another list of names and then we set some guy to Bill and now the question is um, what is output by um, by this um, yeah what is the output of some guy what is the um, value of first names and what is the value of another list of names so if we would print this um, what would this actually print and yeah we'll get a question for that now all right so the answer is some guy is bill if we print some guy we'll get bill first names is fred and george and another list of names is also fred and george and this is because uh, we just assigned first names to another list of names and didn't do a deep copy here okay um, now coming to tuples tuples are very similar to lists but they're immutable meaning that we can't change elements um, in a tuple and we can't append or remove elements um, from a tuple so it's a fixed um, fixed size of um, the tuple and uh, also the elements inside are fixed we can create a tuple by saying um, a variable equals just a couple of values separated by commas and uh, this will return um, this will output this tuple one two three tuples are um, displayed as uh, values separated by comma commas inside parentheses um, and that way we can also initialize them so here we initialize a tuple using uh, the same values one two three again but now we added parentheses around them and semantically this didn't change anything it's just another another way to um, initialize tuples in python and um, now we can print uh, this uh, tuple as well and we can also check if y equals x so um, y is this new tuple x is the other one before here and we actually get the output true so um, if we check for equality of two tuples it will actually check the elements and not um, the object ids um, and here as you can see it already threw an error uh, we tried to assign hello to the first element of the tuple here, of the tuple y, and this doesn't work because it says it here, tuple object does not support item assignment. Um, yeah, and this is another example of that. Um, we create a tuple x, y, uh, which, is, which has the values 23 and 45. Then we print the first element and we try to set it, um, but yeah, this won't work. Another nice feature in um, Python are named tuples and these are also not uh, directly included in Python but we have to import them from the standard library. We do that by saying from collections import named tuple and collections is just another module inside Python and named tuple here um, is a function that can create these tuples. Here we create a named tuple um, and we call it color and we say that it will have a couple of values um, it will have a red value and a green value and a blue value and um, then we'll, Python will actually genera generate um, a kind of doc string for us so we can use this question mark from, from IPython and it will tell us that the initialized uh, signature for that um, is using the name color and then passing a red, a green and a blue value and the doc string is that same thing. Um, here we create a name tuple um, so a color and um, we call it yellow and for yellow we have to set red and green to the maximum value which would mostly be um, 255 for 8-bit colors uh, which is very common and a blue value of zero and if we do this um, python has created a named tuple um, and saved this in yellow here we can output um, the red channel of this color yellow by either saying yellow.red so this directly accesses this red value that we specified up here um, or we just use um, index assign, uh, indexing um, and get the zeroth element which is also the red and they're both 255. Now if we just print yellow 
it will show us a nice representation of um, what is actually stored in this tuple, this named tuple. All right, now dictionaries. Dictionaries are also a very powerful um, collection, collection in Python. And um, dictionaries are basically uh, what other programming languages call map. Uh, they're a mapping of some kind of key to some kind of value. And this key must be unique in a dictionary, but the values can be re repeated as many times as, um, as you want. And uh, we can initialize these dictionaries using uh, curly braces and then saying a key, colon, and a value. And we can um, specify multiple of, uh, multiple, um, of these uh, mappings using commas, uh, separated by commas. Here we um, declare an example dictionary and call it converters. And it um, contains two keys with the corresponding value. The first key is inches in feet and has the value 12. And the second one is inches in meters um, and has the value 39. Now, if we print this, um, we, get a, um, we get a summary of what's inside, but we can also access um, the value of a specific key by saying um, converters and then in square brackets, the key name. So the first um, print will just show us everything that's inside this dictionary. And the second one will just print the value um, of the key inches and feet. All right, um, we can also add a new key value pair to the dictionary by saying um, we have the converters and then in square brackets, we just put a new key and assign to that um, just some value. And if we print the dictionary after that, we can see that it actually added this um, meters in mile, which is 1609.34. Um, um, just as with lists, we can also um, add whole dictionaries to other dictionaries. And instead of doing that with extend, like in lists, uh, we do that with the update method. So first we define another dictionary um, with two key value pairs. And then we say converters.update and we pass this new dictionary that we just defined. And afterwards, converters contains now um, five keys, key value pairs um, and two new ones from the other dictionary. Now, if we try to access a key, uh, to access a value inside a dictionary with a key that does not exist, we get an error, uh, which makes sense because there is no value for a missing key. And it actually tells us uh, there's a key error. It doesn't know decimeters in meter. Um, if we don't want to run in this er into this error, we can um, check if a certain key is inside this dictionary by um, asking if um, certain key in converters. And here the in works similar as uh, with lists. It will tell us if uh, the key is inside this dictionary. And if it is, we will print the value of that. It's, so if it's not in there, we just print wasn't there. And yeah, if we do that, we get uh, wasn't in there because decimeters and meter was not in our converted dictionary. And yeah, additionally, we can also use this get method of the dictionaries. Um, the get method takes two parameters. Um, first, the key that we want to get, and the second one is um, just a value that will be returned if the key was not inside. And here, we again try to get the decimeters in meter, which is not in the dictionary. So we'll just output the placeholder for emptiness that we passed as the second parameter here. Okay, now just a quick word on um, two paradigms um, of which one is very popular in Python. Um, in Python, it's commonly used uh, to do a paradigm uh, called it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission, um, which is just a, a name for a certain type of, or a certain tile, a style of uh, programming, which basically is that you try to do something and if you run into an error, uh, you catch that error and do something else instead. The other paradigm, which is um, very common in uh, languages such as C or Java, for example, is um, the look before you leap one. 
and this is um, a paradigm that you um, should check everything um, if it works, every, uh, every type, um, every value, um, to make sure that everything you do actually works and will not throw an error. But um, Python commonly uses this, um, just try it out, and if it didn't work, do something else. And what is very um, necessary to do this style of programming is a try except, and try except will just tell Python um, that we want to try something, and if this throws an error that was defined in this except um, block, then we do the code that was defined in this block. And these blocks uh, work by um, indentation. So here uh, we write the try and a colon, and then um, we have to indent by um, by a certain number of spaces or a tab, and then um, we do this code uh, that we want to try, which might throw an error. And then this accept, um, after the accept, we write the error we want to catch and another colon. And then in another indented block, uh, we write the code that uh, should be executed if this try block failed. So if we try this, um, it will tell us it wasn't in there, but we um, didn't run into an error, even though decimeters in meter is not defined in converters. Um, yeah, so this line threw a key error, but our accept caught this key error, and instead um, of displaying the error and stopping the program, it just printed wasn't in there. There are also ways um, to get all the keys inside a dictionary, or to get all the values, or get actually the pairs of keys and values. To get all the keys, uh, we can call dictionary.keys. Um, it's a method that returns just um, a collection containing the keys, and we can convert it into a list by calling list and then passing um, these keys in there. Um, same as with values, it will just return as a list of values. And um, these items, um, yeah, this will return us tuples of the key and value. So here in the last one, we can see that um, we get a list of tuples. And these um, tuples contain first the key and then the value. All right, so the next type of data structure we want to look at in Python are sets. Sets are um, unordered and um, unique collections, um, meaning that every element in this uh, collection can only occur once. And um, we are not sure in what order they are stored in the system. So we can't do um, indexing of sets because uh, the order might change and is not really defined. We can create sets um, using the curly braces as well, just as with dictionaries, but Python will understand uh, that you want to create a set if you don't include a key and a value, um, but it would just create a set if you just um, put values into the curly braces. And here we've created a set, and we can print the set um, just normally as um, everything else, and this set contains the values 1, 2, and 3. And uh, now this shows that sets are actually unique. We uh, try to create a set here with um, the elements 1, 2, and then 4 times the 3. But because sets are unique, it will just include the 3 ones, because it realizes that um, 3 was already in there and it throws away 3 of the 3s. All right, um, now if we want to create an empty set, we run into the problem that if we just put curly braces, empty, an empty set of curly braces there, Python does not know if we want to create an empty dictionary or an empty set. So um, the Python developers decided that if you put a set of um, empty curly braces in your code, it will create an empty dictionary. But there still is a way to create a set, an empty set, by just calling the set method, uh, set function um, with empty parentheses. And this creates an empty set. And we can print this and we get uh, what we call type. It's actually a set. Um, yeah, as you can see here, if we just use the curly braces, the empty curly braces, it will be a dictionary um, which is returned by type. There are also some um, very um, handy operators defined for sets. Um, and we'll show you a couple of them here. Um, we first define two sets. First set as one is one, two, and three. 
and the second set S2, S3, 4, 5. Now we print these two first and then we come to the first operator which is the pipe and the pipe um, with two sets will create a union. And so it will use um, all the elements in the two sets and store them in one single set. The second one is the intersection. It's the single ampersand sign and um, what this does is it takes all the elements that are contained in both sets and returns a set containing those. Now the second, uh, the third one is the difference and this just takes the first set uh, without all the elements in the second set. Uh, so if we have a set um, S1 that has uh, values that are also contained in S2, it will uh, remove all the values from S1 that are also contained in S2 and return the remaining ones from S1. And then here we can check um, if S1 is a subset of S2 by using this um, smaller equals syntax and this will return true or false whether uh, S1 is a subset of uh, S2 or not. And then the last operator we want to show you is uh, the XOR and XOR is um, used uh, with a caret symbol, so this uh, hat or caret. Um, this tells Python to use um, the XOR function and XOR will use uh, will take all the elements that are in one of the two but not both. Alright, so now if we execute this we get a whole bunch of outputs and um, yeah, if you want you can check um, to see how everything worked and um, understand everything. And now we can um, check uh, how fast sets actually are because they actually have a very fast um, membership test time. So it's very fast to check if some element is contained inside, um, inside a set compared to uh, in a list, for example. And here we create two um, data structures, first a set and then a list. And we can do this by calling set and then passing another iterable. And in this case, range, uh, we'll get into what range does later. But for now, um, you just have to know that uh, this creates all the numbers from zero to the value we passed. So here we get um, a set containing all the numbers from zero to 999, because this 1000 is also exclusive. And in the second example, we just get a list um, with the same range of numbers. Now we can use this time it um, module again that was already shown in the whirlwind example and uh, here we just test if the number 900 is in the set and we can execute this. Uh, this takes a little while and then it shows us that um, it actually just took 60.3 nanoseconds um, to do this once but it actually ran a couple of uh, ran this a couple of times to make sure that this is a consistent number. If we do this as well for the list, um, yeah, this will take some time again. But then we can compare these numbers and see if the set is faster than the list or not. And we actually see that uh, the set is quite a lot faster than the list because the list took um, 14 microseconds um, to check if uh, the number 900 is in the list. Uh, which is quite a much, uh, quite a bit uh, more time than the 60 nanoseconds for this set. All right, so now we come to another um, exercise, and um, I would like you to write into the um, question that will pop up soon um, the the way of how you would get the unique elements of this list. Uh, so I want you to uh, find out a way how you get the um, a list containing all the uh, unique elements of this cakes list. And yeah, I guess the question will be there now. Okay, and here, um, now if we execute this, I have inserted the, um, the correct answer. And the correct answer is they first create a set of these cakes, which uh, removes the, uh, the double elements. And then we turn this into a list again by passing the set of cakes into the list. And we can see here that in this cakes list, we refer to cheesecake twice. And afterwards, um, as we can see, we only have cheesecake once. And then we also have raspberry pie and strawberry pie. All right, 
And this concludes actually um, the video on data structures or collections in Python. And next up, we'll get to control flow.